this is an article from The Verge. And uh, it talks about um, what's going on in academia. And, you know, this, this is not extremely surprising to me, but it is something that uh, I think we should all be aware of. Uh, and that is uh, black scientists call out racism in their institution. This is this is from uh, this is from The Verge, uh, and uh, we're going to read through this article to the best of our ability. Okay, uh, it says uh, a reckoning has come this week for systematic racism. When was this written? Uh, this was written June eleventh, so just a couple of days ago, about a week 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 and a half ago. Black scientists and students are sharing their experiences on Twitter of being dismissed and discriminated against in academia using the hashtags, hashtag black in the ivory. Uh, many also participate in a June 10th strike meant to shut down, this, shut down STEM industries in support of the Black Lives Matter movement. Thousands of tweets detailing what it's like to be black in the ivory towers of universities and research institutions point to deep-seated problems. Tweet after tweet describes similar horrifying experiences from individuals spread across the world. Some leading institutions, including academic journals, are now taking steps towards ending systemic exclusion, exploitation, and belittling black scholars. Quote, uh, we always try to separate science from these kinds of things, as if science is not at all impacted by racial bias and racist histories, and that's just the biggest fabrication you could be telling anyone these days. Uh, says Alex Moore, a postdoctoral researcher at the American Museum of Natural History. She joined the strike yesterday uh, and says her workplace was supportive in her decision. It matters a lot to me to see scientists and academic institutions saying that we are not separate from these issues. Uh, and then here's Alex's treat being hashtag black in the ivory means everyone having means having everyone believe you were only accepted to meet a diversity quota until you start to believe it yourself. Imposter syndrome is racial trauma for black and brown students. That's kind of that's kind of crazy fucked up to me. Like that level of you know like she's talking about imposter syndrome and I don't know if I particularly experienced that, but I've definitely felt like, like I've, I've been on some shows or I've been part of like groups and I've definitely felt like not particularly uh, a part of the group, but I'm there for like a reason. And, and, and that's probably the closest that I've had, but that's, that's so, I mean, that's fucked up. Uh, that's really, really fucked up to do. It, you know, is like to treat somebody like they're a diversity hire is, uh, I, that, but that, you know, and that's also is like, you're, you're using your own fucking insecurity about yourself and your place in, in academia and the sciences to belittle somebody else to make yourself feel better when it's like, no, 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 but you two should collaborate and build each other up. Like, why aren't we doing that more? Okay. Uh, academic in institutions participating in the strike include the American Physical Society, the Journal Science, the Journal Physical Review Letters, and the preprint servers ARXIV, uh, among others. The goal of the strike is to push institutions to consider how they've marginalized black people and take steps to do better. It's also time to prioritize the needs of black people in STEM, whether that is to rest, reflect, or to act without incurring additional cumulative damage, according to the strike organizers. Nearly 6,000 scientists signed to participate. Wow, that's amazing. Um, the, the journal Nature decided to only publish content on the day of the strike that is directly relevant to supporting black researchers uh, or that amplifies their voices. Referring to stories on social media, the journal said in an editorial, the outpouring is in part because black researchers have long denied a space and platform in established institution and publications such as this one. And we recognize that nature is one of the white institutions that is responsible for bias in research and scholarship. 
the enterprise of science has been and remains complicit in, in systemic and, and it must strive harder to correct those injustices. Uh, my, only, my hope in this is that they, they continue to do this in some way, shape, or form. Um, I love seeing that sort of stuff, but I want it to carry on forward. Right, like the whole support black businesses movement. It's like, okay, we're going to support black movement, support black businesses on Saturday, June twentieth, and then everybody is like, yeah, woo, and then they all go and support their favorite black business, and then they don't see that black business for the rest of the year. And it's just like, oh, remember that thing we did on on June twentieth? That was nice, huh? We gave you guys like uh, twenty five bucks. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. We bought a we bought a poster. We hang up and we talk about it. We talk about how we helped. We help the poor blacks. It, that's that's not helping. That's you, you know, I, I don't know, touting how much money you have. It's this condescending way of, uh, of treating the black community. No, you need, like, are you going to be continuing that sort of stuff? So if I hope nature continues to amplify the voice of black scientists and their research and why their work is important, make sure that they are in, you know, if they are heads of their research, then you include them in the, you, you put them as a focus in the article. They should be the focus of the article. Okay, uh, the injustices are innumerable. Many scientists use the hashtag, hashtag black in the ivory described being mistaken for a janitor or a housekeeper. Quote, at a fellowship induction ceremony, the woman at the door greeting the white student in front of me for their name so they could retrieve their name tag and then ask me if I was the help. I went back to my dorm and sobbed until I vomited. The University of North Carolina PhD candidate Maya Roberson tweeted. This is like cartoonish racism to me. And it's and I know it exists, right? Like, I'm not trying to discount what happened. I believe that this fucking happened. It's just every time it happens, I'm just like, you're a, you're not a, you're a fucking cartoon person. Like, how are you? How are you this racist? Whether it's whether it's conscious or unconsciously, like this is the type of shit that you see in like a, a you know a Lifetime movie produced by Oprah Winfrey, you know, and they're just like, are you the help? And it's like, I'm I'm actually the detective or whatever the fuck it is. Is like that's but that and that's that moment. It's crazy to me that this woman had to fucking live that. It's so wild. Like, ugh. I'm getting a little. I'm getting a little hyped up. But when I read it, I I got a little hyped up in my own mind. I was robbed of that joy, and that felt like I deserved. Uh, I I was sorry. I'm going to restart that whole the whole quote here. Uh, I was robbed of the joy that I felt like I deserved. And even beyond that, I don't think that that's an appropriate way to greet anyone regardless of their role. Which is, yeah, which is, yes, you should not be like, oh, are you the help? Like, who the fuck does that? Even if they are, go, hi, how, how's it going? Uh, is your name on the list? How can I help you? Oh, and they go, oh, I'm actually here to do this other thing. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, you know what? Let me figure out where to go to get a thing. It's like, why would you make an assumption like that? You fucking cartoon villain. What a, like it's so I and I know this stuff happens. I know this stuff happens. It's just it's unfathomable. Like I can't wrap my head around the the decision that a human being has to make with their brain and all of these experiences that we see in the world around us and then go, oh black person, maybe help. What? How? 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 It's so crazy to me. Like I can't I can't put the fucking pieces together. <laughs> <laughs> like I just can't do it. I know I'm hung up on it a little bit, uh, but I just I just can't fucking put the pieces together, you guys. And it, it's 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 it drives me fucking banana sandwiches to fucking see that sort of shit. Uh, okay. Uh, others describe being hassled by security guards or having the police called on them on their campus or at their places of work. For okay. Uh, once again, I apologize if I've mispronounced this next name. Um, if you know how to pronounce it, please feel free to leave a comment about how to phonetically pronounce it. Okay. For Naoma Adaku, uh, being black in the ivory tower meant having a security guard call police on her five years ago 
while she was working in a lab at Yale. Uh, she, sa she says she reported the incident to administration, but ultimately began using a different entrance to the building to avoid the same security guard. Adaku is now an MD-PhD candidate at Rockefeller University researching mechanisms of cancer metastasis and also participated in yesterday's strike, the June, uh, June 10th strike. Like, that's so nuts to me. I don't know, I don't know if I was fortunate or not. Um, although, no, I mean, I went to a pretty, pretty, pretty diverse, uh, college. I went to a relatively diverse college, but you know, that was the thing is like, I caught myself at one point doing that because there were there were two black kids in my graphic design program, um, and they were very talented in what they and they had a they had a much different style because it wasn't as clean and precise as everybody else's, um, or it wasn't as decorative as some of the other people. Like my head doesn't work in like my head didn't work the same way that that theirs did. Right. And in my for, for a minute, I know I had this bias and I caught myself with that bias. Uh, and, you know, like I, I got to talk to them and learn about them and who they are, where they come from. And everything started to click. And I was like, oh, this is I've, I think I've been, I've, I might have accidentally fucking had my own biases and made a judgment call out of it. But I didn't do the fucking crazy thing that that lady did at that inauguration. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't fucking, oh, are you guys the help? Like, no. Uh, I, that was a shitty moment for me, but I wanted to, I learned from that moment. And I, got, and I worked on a project with them. And it's actually like, it's one of my favorite projects is we, um, I work with, I work, I'm, I don't want to, you know, say any names unless, you, because I don't, I don't know if they want to be publicly identified or whatever, but I work with one of them, uh, w one of these, these black students and, uh, you know, um, his, his idea was fun. I sometimes forget to do that. Like I talk about it in my albums, like I'm not a fun person. I, I, te I tend to end up being a little bit more serious for a comedian, right? It's like, go, no shit. Um, but his idea was just fun. And then once I kind of dove into that, we started bouncing ideas back and forth and like how to film it and stuff. Um, and, and he, you know, some of the technical aspects, like he wasn't, he wasn't very big on. But you know what he did? He learned about it. And he sat behind me and was like, what are you doing there? How are you doing that? What's that tool do? Oh, how are you handling this? Oh, you're shrinking this time scale. And then uh, not only that, but he was also in the, like, he was also like the actor in the commercial, which he fucking nailed it too. Uh, it's, it was pretty, like, but again, it's like, my own biases when I was a freshman versus when I was like a junior, like I would have not worked with him the same way. Uh, and the whole point was to work with different people because we had all gotten used to like working with the same people. So I turned to him and I was like, Hey, let's do the project together. And I don't think I would have done that if I had my, if, if I continued to have my bias, I, like, I don't think so. Um, and you know, and it's like, I, I, I don't know if I, skip that or not but anyway so i fucking went off on a weird tangent uh black scientists also share experiences of being told by other students or co-workers that their presence was due to diversity in the institution and not because of merit uh that happened to tracy edwards when she was an inter intern at vanderbilt university she's a nuclear physics phd student at michigan state university now uh i got into my own merit and my own credit and for someone to just reduce that down to my race is is a complete insult. Yes, one fucking hundred percent. One fucking hundred percent. In the entertainment world, that kind of happens all the time. 
is like the only time that they'll hire, they'll they'll put up uh, you know certain black comics or certain brown comics on stage is when it's a all brown show or an all black show or an all female show or whatever, and these themed token shows. Um, I don't know. I, I I end up having mixed feelings about them, but they they feel tokenized to me. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm being honest with you. I got so tired of hearing these stories of black scientists being pushed out of STEM. Edward says only 9% of STEM workers in the U.S. are black compared to 69% who are white. According to the Pew Research, black males and black females each made up about 2% of full-time professors in 2017, according to the National Center of Education Statistics. It feels like an academia. You're just not welcome. So that's why I've taken to Twitter. Uh, yeah, which is like, that's where, <laughs> sometimes it's where you gotta go. Uh, things that are caught on camera that are physically abusive and egregious are terrible, but they are really, but, but we are unable to really grasp and acknowledge the covert racism that happens. Uh, and when you see that sort of stuff, that's the shit that you're supposed to call out. That's, that's part of being anti-racist. Uh, says, uh, and that was a quote by Joy Melody Woods, a doctoral student at the University of Texas at Austin. Uh, Woods started the hashtag Black in the Ivory uh, hashtag along with uh, Sh Chardre Davis, PhD and assistant professor of communications at the University of Con Connecticut. Sorry if I mispronounced that. Uh, Woods says the momentum user hashtag has garnered uh, online is evolving into specific demands for universities and other institutions. We're calling for structural radical change uh, for institutions that perpetuate white supremacy. Uh, the social media campaign and STEM strike are playing alongside with worldwide protests against racism and the deaths of black people at the hands of police. It's only people of privilege who have that notion that science is separate from these societal issues because uh, as black scientists, we're not given the same ability to separate our specific scientific lives outside uh, or, and our lives outside science, Adakus tells The Verge. Uh, what people are comfortable with sharing on social media barely scratches the surface of the abuse within science and academia, others, others tweeted. Black students were fed up, Wood says. Black people as a whole are fed up in the country right now uh, of racism. Boom. Yeah, I think there's an implicit bias based on how the the media portrays black people, how we are we are told to think about black people. Uh, I've been guilty of it. Fortunately, I was able to uh, f look at my guilt and um, learn from it and and move forward from it. Um, and I hope other people do too. Like, I, I mean, I, I know I fucked up a, a couple times. But the point is that you realize that you fucked up. You apologize for it. And you, you, you grow as a person. That's the important thing. These institutions that come out and make these apologies and they go, oh, man, that's crazy. Like we didn't, you know, I know people in academia. I know tons of people in academia and being a woman in academia is not great either. It's the same thing. It's like they, they don't take you seriously. They're just like, oh, you're diversity hired. You were hired because you're tits, baby, or whatever the fuck, you know. And I'm thinking about it in my in, in my own college experience. Right. Out of my entire school, there was one Indian professor who was part of the interior design department and one black professor that I can remember. His name was Augustus Brown. He, Dr. Augustus Brown. Uh, he was my art history teacher and he was one of the coolest fucking people I've ever met in my life. He was awesome. He was so fucking cool. Uh, I love that dude. And I got to see that dude once in a Panera randomly. And then I sat, I stood there and talked to him for like 15 minutes. And then he looked at me uh, and he said, uh, he was like, I got to get some lunch. I can sit here and talk to you all day, but I got to get me some lunch. I've been looking forward to some broccoli cheddar soup. I love the broccoli cheddar soup. And then we shook hands and he got his broccoli cheddar soup. And I went home. I was very happy. I was having, a, I was kind of having a shit day and I was very happy. Um, 
I, I think I was actually applying for a job at Panera at that point. Uh, cause I, cause I was like, I just, I needed like a different job or some shit. I don't know. Uh, but I was like not feeling great. And I, and then I saw Dr. Brown and, uh, and boy, it was a fucking great day. Actually, this is, um, I've been meaning to do something with this, but this is, is my art history notebook. And this was part of the way that Dr. Brown would help you learn. So you make this notebook, right? You use drawings and you make timelines and stuff like this. And there's a lot of this stuff that, like, I kind of still remember. You know, like, you do these papers. Here's all these notes that I took. And he gave you carte blanche and, like, how to organize it, how to, how to, how to design it, and be creative, and all this other stuff. And uh, he was just super fucking encouraging. But that's the only black teacher I had. Four years of college, that's the only black teacher I had. Uh... Which to me is kind of crazy, but I, 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 but I think that's the point in academia, is I think intellectualism is is co opted by the white supremacy movement in saying that, and this goes back to like old race science type shit, uh, it you know, in basically saying that black and brown people are not intelligent, um, which is also this weird thing because brown people are, like Indian people specifically, are touted for their intelligence. But we become the good minority, the model minority, right? We become that model minority. Oh, look, they're intelligent, and their intelligence is going to be used to benefit us. So, so we get, we, there's this weird roundabout way of, of, of utilizing brown people in the world of academia, even though we're not really a part of the world of academia as much. Like, we're still a, we're still a major minority in the world of academia. As is my understanding. Same thing with black people. Black people, the the intellectualization of black people is not seen as something um, to be coveted. Uh, or or if you do see an intellectual black person, uh, such as a Cornell West, it seemed like an anomaly. They're just like, well, this, this guy's different. He's probably he probably hung out with some white people. You know, that's where he learned it from. It's like shit like that. And it's like, no, no. Most of the cool shit has been invented by black and brown people. The foundations are invented by bra black and brown people. Uh, the foundations of science are invented by black and brown people. My closer on my album is about the number zero that comes from India. Like, so, yeah, I think that is that is a uh, the 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 level of intellectualism. <laughs> credited or discredited to black and brown communities, I think is a form of white supremacy, probably. Um, not even probably, it is. And uh, and then there's, there's and then it kind of gets mucked up even more, right? Because then there's this whole big thing of like championing anti-intellectualism. Like people like being anti-intellectual. Uh, you know, it's like, oh, you gotta be dumb because if you're smart, you're a fucking nerd and nerds get their underwear pulled up or whatever the fuck. It is right. It, so it this this notion that like look, academics are already beaten up enough, right? So why are you adding racism into it? But it's another way to devalue communities of color. Uh, so if you see that shit in your community, if you're an academic that 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 watches this show and you see that shit in your community, you gotta call it out, and you gotta stop participating in it. Hey folks, uh, thank you so much for checking out this uh, this video. Thank you very much for tuning into this channel. If you enjoyed the video, uh, if you like what you see here, please give it a thumbs up and share this out with whoever you think would benefit from this. Share it with your friends, your family, your enemies, whoever you think needs to, to, to watch uh, content like this. And uh, I'm also gonna be doing uh, live virtual stand-up comedy shows via Zoom. Uh, called the Citizen Revolution Comedy Shows. Their tickets are available for those right now. Uh, you got to get your tickets, and 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 you got to get them as soon as you possibly can. Uh, for two reasons: one, 
that's how I'm going to be able to communicate the login information to you guys. That way we don't have any unwanted visitors showing up in the uh, in the virtual theater, the Zoom virtual theater. Uh, and, uh, and, and I'm just one man. And it's very difficult to keep track of uh, a bunch of different people that I need to give tickets out to. So uh, that's how I'm going to be able to communicate the, the login information as efficiently as possible. The second reason to get them quickly too is because there are limited spots uh, and half the ticket sales are going to help a uh, grassroots organization, venue, journalist, uh, and so on and so forth. Every, every single week it's a brand new show and every single week we have a brand new grassroots organization or venue or journalist or, uh, that uh, we are going to be donating half those ticket sales to. So um, if you want to be a part of that, uh, please get those tickets as soon as you can. And uh, you can you can make a one-time donation, you can or you can become a sustaining member uh, by going to my website krishmohan.com as well, k-r-i-s-h-m-o-h-a-n.com. Uh, you can uh, you can become a sustaining member via Patreon uh, over Bandcamp or directly on my website. That gets you free tickets to some of these live virtual stand-up comedy shows. It gets you unreleased stand-up comedy material. Gets early access to uh, my web series Forkful of Noodles, the extended, big long episodes of of that. Um, you also get if you miss a Citizen Revolution show, don't we got you? We we'll, we put those up for our patrons and uh, our sustaining members to check out. So, I hope you guys can uh, if you if you have the ability to make a donation, you do. If you have the ability to become a sustaining member. That you do but the important thing is to make sure that you like share and subscribe to this stuff because content like this often doesn't get shown to the maximum number of people so i depend very much on you guys to get the word out there thank you so much for tuning in i really appreciate it i really appreciate all the people that do tune in uh that have become patrons that have made donations that buy these tickets you guys are fucking awesome uh, it's it sure as hell helping me out, uh, uh, you know, in in this tough time, and uh, and it's helping me continue produce these shows uh, at the at a, at a higher quality than um, than before, and and keep pushing uh, to create to create these these videos to the best of uh, to the best of my ability, and add you know the the, the cooler bells and whistles to it. I'm, I'm the only person that works on these shows. I'm, I'm doing all this stuff. So uh, every every little bit, every every sustaining member and every ticket sale totally, totally fucking helps out. Um, and I appreciate the hell out of it. Thank you so much. And we'll see you at the next video.